Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca Logan, and today I'm going to be talking about my Franklin Christoph collection. Franklin Christoph is an American company uh, based in North Carolina, and they sell accessories like fine fountain pens, leather goods, um, pen cases, fancy nibs. I think they do some other things like watch related things. Let me just check. What do they sell? I have their website up. Inks, ballpoints and pencils, paper. Yes, timepieces, notebook covers, things like that. But what I have is two of their pen cases and 13 of their pens. So what you're seeing is a three pen case and a 12 pen case. These are made from natural wood fiber and they contain a removable soft cotton, I think it's cotton, it's very soft, whatever it is, um, pen holder. And you just slide your pens right in there and then pop them in the pen case. I'm gonna pull this one out because we're going to be re revisiting it. And they do a great job of holding your pens very securely. They're very firm. I actually bought this case specifically for when I send pens away to my local Nibmeister to be ground or smooth and tuned. I pack them in this, three pens at a time I send him. I put this in a bubble mailer and off it goes into Canada Post to Jack. Jack Hernandez does my nib grinds for me and smoothing and tuning. He is local to me in that he's from Calgary. I'm from the Edmonton area. So about three hours away by car, um, a couple of days by mail. I love Canada Post. So that is a three pen envelope. So they shorten it to penvelope. So it's a three pen, uh, penvelope three. Next is my Penvelope 12, and this contains the majority of my Franklin Christoph pen collection. It's not all in there, and we'll get to that in a moment. So in it are two removable inserts. We'll start with this one. You're going, oh, it's mostly empty. Well, no, actually, it's filled with teeny tiny pens. That one's empty. That's got a teeny tiny pen, teeny tiny pen. Uh, let me throw the extra teeny tiny pen in there. It was in my pen block, my wooden pen block, because it's in use, it's currently inked. So these are called, these five, poke you out of the way. These five are called model 45s. My first Franklin Christoph pen was this Model 45 in Cherry Ice. As you can see, this is not a big enough pen to hold a converter. It can hold a cartridge, but I prefer to eyedropper fill it. So just fill this part of the pen body with ink and treat it with silicone grease so it doesn't leak. And this has a medium nib. It's a number five size or a size five uh, I believe these are Yovo nibs, but I am not 100% sure. They might be Schmidt. Um, I think they're Yovo. Anyway, it's a number five nib and it's a medium. Next up is the Amber Ice. A beautiful pen with a cat hair on it. Looks like I closed the lid on that cat hair. And this has a medium Mike Masayama stub on it. Now I call it a Mike Masayama stub because he is a nibmeister who worked, who used to work with Franklin Christoph. In the past, they had an in-house nibmeister named Jim Rouse, who sadly passed away a few years ago. And they had an external specialist who did their stubs and their uh, italic nibs, grind, uh, stub and italic nib grinds. The in-house nib specialist did smoothing and tuning 
and checking all nibs before they leave the before they leave the factory if you can call it a factory it's a small small company um before they leave the shop he checks everything with a i think it's a seven part test and made every made sure that every pen that went out wrote beautifully right out of the box so this one is was a limited edition a few years ago called black pink blue or pink blue black something like that i call it my Upic pen. If you know what an Upic is, then you will see exactly what I'm talking about. There looks like there's an Upic on this pen. So the nib on this pen is another Masayama stub. So Mike Masayama was their external, non-in-house uh, nib meister. So I like stubs. They're the first nibs I uh custom ground nibs I tried were stubs and I love them this one for example has an 18 karat gold medium Masayama stub and is inked you can see the ink sloshing around inside there it holds a lot of ink I tend not to fill them because I like to change my inks up often and my pens so I don't go for a full load a uh, load of this much ink would would last me months and months of writing and I would get bored writing with the same pen and the same ink. So yeah, this gold nib is actually my favorite nib of all time. Now, Franklin Christoph no longer carries the 18 karat gold nibs. I guess they were problematic in some way and they found the 14 karat gold nibs uh, work better for them. So that's what they work with now. But I love the way that where the Franklin Christoph em, uh, emblem, uh, this way, where the emblem is embossed into or debossed into the um, engraved, that's the word I'm looking for, engraved into the nib. You can see the actual gold tone of the gold nib as opposed to just the rhodium coating on top. So another Mike Masayama stub. This next one is a more recent purchase. Now, Mike Masayama no longer works with them. They have a gentleman whose first name I do not know, but I know his last name is Nagahara. And he is doing their stubs and their italic nibs for them now. So this is a broad Nagahara stub. And this is just called black. And you're thinking five pens the same size yes they're extremely comfortable once you post the pen it's extremely comfortable to hold and write with so unposted it's not really meant it's not meant to be used unposted it's meant to be posted and written with like that these are great pocket pens. I adore them. They're so cute. I would like more. I have to control myself though. This is a 45L. 45 in that it is very much the same as the 45s, but L in that it's just a little bit longer. And it is just long enough to hold a converter. Now, I do not have a converter in here because, in all honesty, I like looking at the inside of this with this frosted acrylic, the, this beautiful finish on the inside. I don't know how they do that, how they get it looking that nice on the inside. Um, I like to see the ink slosh in these, so I will eyedropper this pen. This one has another medium Masayama stub. And this says IPO right there, IPO. This was an initial public offering when they were looking at coming out with the 45L. They did not follow through with the 45L. Instead, what they came out with was the 46, which is long enough to hold a converter. So the 45L went away. So I'm glad I have that because it no longer exists going to pull this out and put it back in my pen block because it's an actively inked pen. 
The next ones I have from Franklin Kristoff are not all the same. This is a 451. It's a 45 with one extra digit on the end. It's a, called a 451. It's long enough to hold a converter and it has a clip on the end. Now, normally the clip is on the cap of the pen, but this time the clip is not on the cap. It is on the end. So it actually stores upside down in your pocket or in your pen envelope. This one has a medium SIG nib. SIGs are the in-house grind. SIG stands for stub italic grind. It's halfway between a stub and an italic. That's why it's called that. And this one holds a converter. So I use this with a converter. It's a black pen body, so I don't like to eyedropper it because you, you can't see how much ink you have left inside with this solid black. So a converter is the wise choice. That way you can open it and see how much ink is left. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Let's bring it up a little closer and hopefully it will focus. It looks like the very tipping up here has been ground down a little bit. That's how I tell the difference between a SIG and a stub. A SIG has some of the top tipping material ground off it. It's a little sharper than a stub, so it's a little closer to an italic. It's not a full-on italic, which is a sharp grind, um, but it is closer to a true italic nib than a stub is. And it's a really nice grind. I have a few of these. I love them. They're absolutely phenomenal. I love my stubs, don't get me wrong, but the SIGs are now a very, very appreciated grind in my household. So next is another pocket pen. I love Franklin Christoph's pocket pens. I think they do a fantastic job. This is a Model 20 pocket. So Model 20 has a full-size version. This is the pocket version of the Model 20. And this is in the Maya Blue. This one has a 14 karat gold flex nib that is a fine and it has a SIG grind. Now, when Franklin Christoph first came out with these flex nibs, you see it, it bends quite, quite a bit because of these cutouts here on the sides. It's able to bend quite a bit, so you can really get some interesting and beautiful flex writing out of these nibs. When they first came out with these gold flex nibs, they offered them in SIG grinds, so I grabbed one. What I did not realize is that I don't like flex. So I have this rather expensive specialty nib that I never use. Uh, when I ink this pen, I have some perfectly matching ink in my collection. When I ink this pen, I don't flex the nib. I just use it as a simple SIG. So just by not putting pressure on it, I can get beautiful writing out of it. Another Model 20 pocket. This is a Wonder Pens exclusive material. I didn't mention it earlier, but this one is too. This 45, the inked one, is Wonder Pens exclusive. Wonder Pens being a Toronto area um, pen shop, the stationery shop that focuses on beautiful stationery and that brought in some exclusive Franklin Christoph pens for a while. This is their exclusive material. And when I bought these, um, they all came with ordinary nibs. I either got mediums or music nibs. And I since put the, med the plain mediums and the, plain and the music nibs aside. They're in my nib box, box of nibs I don't love, and bought sig nibs or stub nibs for them. So this is a medium stub in here. This would be a Masayama stub because of the timing. Next up, actively in my pen block because it is inked, is a full-size Model 20. 
and like the other two it's a pop lid it, it doesn't um, screw off it snaps off and it's a friction fit lid lid this is inked you can see that ink sloshing around in there and that wonder pens exclusive material just looking gorgeous this is a 14 karat gold medium sig it has that little slice off the top of the tipping material has been taken off and it's a beautiful beautiful line variation uh, type of pen so let me put that back in my pen block so i can use it now i talked about jim rouse and mike masayama being the previous two nibmeisters used by franklin christoph um since Jim Rouse passed, they had to get a new in-house Nibmeister, and they now have Audrey Madison. What Audrey does is, actually, I, I'm jumping ahead here. The pen I got adjusted by Audrey is this one. Audrey does their SIG nibs, and she does their tuning and smoothing. And this is a Model 31 in a purpure. That's really hard to say. It's purple. I'm going to call it purple with beautiful chatoyance and a little bit of black and a little bit of white. It's a gorgeous pen material. Model 31, screw off. Screw off cap, large grip section. And this is an extra fine that was ground and tuned, well, not ground, but tuned by Audrey Madison. And this is the best extra fine nib I've ever owned and I've owned quite a few when I started in my fountain pen journey I bought nothing but extra fines and didn't really understand why I hated writing with them so much but this writing with this particular extra fine nib really made me realize that I had been writing with factory nibs that hadn't been properly tuned and Audrey did such a spectacular job this is like writing with a medium or a broad it's that smooth but in an extra fine nib. So yeah, kudos to Audrey. She does a fantastic job. And then last but not least is a model number three in the cocoa material. A lot of chatoyance there. You see that glow. Another screw off one. This one, the... Um, the, oh, why can't I speak? The threads, the threads for the screw on cap are down here. And this holds a medium SIG, uh, steel SIG. If I have, if I haven't said it's gold, it's assume high, uh, high profile, high performance steel, HPS, high performance steel, that's it. And this one, do, do, do. As with the purple one I just showed you, holds a converter because these are solid pens that are impossible to see through. You could eyedropper them, but you would risk opening them to see how much ink is in and spilling ink everywhere. Ask me how I know. So that is almost all of the pens in my Franklin Christoph pen collection, but you've seen, you've seen 12 pens. So the 10 here, the two that are back in the wood block, I have one more. This is not a Franklin Christoph pen case. Here you are. This is a Model 66 in solid ice. That's the material color. So the Model 66 is like a desk pen. It's built to be longer. Um, it's got a flat surface on it so that it doesn't roll around on your desk. This is flat right here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, the light is glinting off it. I think you can see that flat there again the threads are up here so they are out of the way of your fingers when you hold the pen and this is a broad stub nib a steel broad stub 
You can fit a converter in here, but I don't. I love to see the ink sloshing around. I often ink this with a flashy red, huh? notice the red tone, or teal. Notice the teal tone, ink. Uh, diamine steel blue or diamine red dragon are my favorites to put in this pen. And I have silicone grease protecting the threads so that the ink doesn't leak out. And the silicone grease picks up the dye from the ink. So that's why this bit looks red and this bit looks teal. I don't know if you can see that. Oh yeah, I think you can. So the pen itself is not stained. The silicone grease between the threads is stained. So I just have to clean this out with a Q-tip and some hot soapy water, and that should clean out the color from the threads. So back that goes. It doesn't fit in my Penvelope 6. It is too long. It barely fits in this case. You can see it's all the way down to the bottom and all the way up at the top here. It's really pushing the limit of size for fitting into a case. So that's um, a Model 66. There's also a Pocket 66, which I do not have, because it turns out I prefer the Pocket 45 um, or the Pocket 20. Those are my pocket pens of choice from Franklin Christoph. I don't have all the different models. There are a couple of models I would like to try at some point um, that I have not yet, but I have enough Franklin Christoph pens for now. Okay, there's one I'm eyeing very, very closely. It's another Model 45 in the Salmon Glow material. It's so pretty, but uh, you can only have so many. I have no more room in my penvelope. My penvelope is full, so I have to resist. So I'll fold that back up. And I will show you a writing sample with the two pens that are inked, a stub versus a sig. So I'm going to show you that on Tomoe River paper. So here is the stub. Let me get my hand on my page protector. It's a Franklin Christoph model 45 in the Wonder Pens Pens exclusive material. with an 18 karat gold medium Masayama stub. Stub. And this ink is Robert Oster green olive. And stubs have, oops, a wide downstroke and a narrow cross stroke, but all of the edges are beautifully smoothed and curved. So there's nothing sharp that could catch on an upstroke or a diagonal. Stubs are a very um, beginner friendly way to get into line variation. They are probably the easiest 
way to get into line variation. If you like fountain pens and you want to move beyond fine, medium, broad, and extra fine, and into something with line variation, stubs are a great place to start. Especially from Franklin Christoph, because the cost of getting a specialty ground stub is not that much money. Let me check. Just check the website, fountain pens. Um, nib unit, a number five nib unit. A high performance steel medium is going for 20. A high performance SIG medium is going for 44. So that's $22 for a SIG. Now, if you buy the pen itself, let's just open a pen. Yeah, my iPad is just sitting across from me here. If I choose a stub, it's an extra $25. So that's a really, really good deal. Um, the nib grinder charges, I think 35 or 40 for a stub. So, and, um, yeah, stubs for a uh, stub for $25 is a really good deal. So now let's look at my model 20. I like to post this. So it's a Franklin. Christoph Model 20. Wonder pens. Exclusive material. This is a 14 karat gold. Medium. This would have been a Rouse, Jim Rouse. Sig. For stub italic gradient, meaning it's part way between a stub and an italic. And this ink is Ferris Wheel Press. Madame Mulberry. I don't know if you heard that, but it's a lot sharper than the stub because this is a SIG. So again, you have a nice broad downstroke because it's a medium nib. So it has a medium sized downstroke and a very narrow cross stroke. The cross stroke on this is a lot narrower than the cross stroke on the stub. There's just a little less, a little more tipping material has been removed. So a little less tipping material to make the horizontal line. Actually, let's put the stub right next to it so you can compare the two on the same stage, so to speak. Yeah, I can't write like that. I need to be posted. It's, it's hard to tell from this distance, but this dub has just a ever so slightly fatter cross stroke. Ever so slightly fatter. They're beautiful pens. I adore them. This one has my favorite all time nib. That's that 18 karat gold medium stub. Um, this one's in my top three nibs. So it's probably my third favorite nib because I have a second favorite nib. Franklin Kristoff makes beautiful pens. They have a lot of really interesting acrylic materials that they make their pens out of. They do a thing where they take trials and one-offs and individual pens to pen shows 
and people can buy phenomenal one-off pens or small run pens that are absolutely gorgeous that'll never show up again. So Franklin Christoph's table is always very busy at pen shows. I've never been lucky enough to be to, at a pen show where Franklin Christoph is because I've never been to a pen show. I live in a pen show desert. Uh, Canada. We have one a year in Toronto, but I am a six and a half hour flight from Toronto, so that's not going to happen. And Franklin Christoph doesn't come to the Canadian Pen Show anyway. But yes, if you ever get to a pen show, go to the Franklin Christoph table and check out their one off materials and exclusives. And you can try out all of their nibs. They have a nib station where you can try out all sizes in all their grinds and all their materials. And then you choose your nib. So you buy your body and you buy your nib separately. And then they will have someone tune it for you to your particular liking while you're there. So Audrey goes, Audrey Madison goes to the pen shows and she sits and she grinds and tunes and smooths nibs for customers as they buy the pens. It's an amazing service that nobody else offers. So if you get a chance to buy a Franklin Christoph pen, I cannot recommend it highly enough. Their pens are fantastic and I really like their pen envelopes too. What's not to like? It's a non-leather material that wears better than leather. No scratch. I've got pretty wicked talons and no scratches. I'm not leaving any marks on this, so it's way better than leather. And these are affordable. These are under $100. And they hold 12 pens. So yeah, I really like Franklin Christoph. I can't help gushing about them a bit. I'm sorry. Um, thanks for sticking with me. And I hope you learned something new today. And maybe it inspired you to get a new fountain pen from a company you may not have used, uh, may not have seen before or heard much about. Thank you very much. Have a great day.